Hey guys, here's a little uh, impromptu video of how to take one of these solar rotating displays and change the base to make a nice background or backdrop uh, coaster, whatever you want to call it, for your uh, diecast vehicles. So, yesterday I made this one. It's just a CD, you know, some old uh, a software DVD, and I just uh, spray glued some sandpaper on there, and I used some masking tape to mask off a line, and I hit it with an airbrush, and then I used this hobby grass to make this effect here. And then I realized that, uh, you know, that a DVD will block so much of the solar panels that the solar panels don't want to spin unless, you know, you have a really bright cabinet that hits it from the side. So today I'm going to uh, show you guys how to just modify the, the original plastic plate. So I already made it and I'm just going to basically remake this one and show you guys how I did it. So the original plastic plate looked like this, you know, it's a translucent, uh, transparent piece of plastic. And obviously it'd be clean and clear. So before you start messing with spray glues, of course you could double side tape it as well, and that would work. But if you're going to use spray paint, spray glues, you want to really use a chemical mask. Because uh, if you get a headache, that's your brain telling you you're getting brain damage. So I'm going to put this mask on and I'm going to get kind of muffled with the sound. But uh, I think I got enough brain damage yesterday by not wearing the mask that uh, I'm gonna wear it this time around. All right, so first uh, spray glue itself, you know, it's just glue in a can and it's an aerosol can. You wanna only spray one side, meaning either the plastic thing or the sandpaper. If you spray both the plastic and the sandpaper and you stick them together, it's gonna be extremely hard to take apart. Now you'll see I screwed up this one because I used this cheap masking tape, you know, this line. So I'm lucky I only used the, the spray on this plastic and not the sandpaper. It just peeled off pretty easy. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and spray this. Uh, let me get this car out of the way here. Okay, so you just uh, hit, hit the thing very lightly with the spray glue. Just enough to see that you sprayed it on there is fine. Okay, I'm back. So I hit the thing with glue, and then uh, right after you hit it with glue, you want to, you know, just stick it onto some sandpaper. But I thought I'd take a pause and just say that sandpaper comes in different grits. Uh, this DVD here is using this 80 grit, and it's not bad. It's fine, but obviously it's more abrasive. And so, you know, do I want to scratch up my tires and stuff? not as much. So today I'm going to try the 220 and that's actually what I did here for these these two little guys are 220. You can still see the texture right so I think you'll be fine. So all right I'm gonna put the mask back on hit this glue again. Eh, it actually is tacky so never mind. I just sprayed it. I'm gonna stick it on here and you know since the plastic is thick you can just use scissors or shears First you can do it sloppy and then you can come back and if you press the plastic against the edge of the scissors you should be able to cut a pretty good circle because this plastic is the template of cutting. Right? You just got to make sure you're pressing the plastic up against the scissor blade. right? And then if you, you might have some excess hanging over you just go back around and Right, so that's a lot cleaner. So it turns out this is actually a canted top, so I'm actually angling my cuts. Eh, whatever. I guess that's good enough. Now this sandpaper happens to be very shiny, but I'm going to hit it with some uh, flat uh, varnish afterwards. I'm going to move that thing out. Okay, so this is a lesson I learned here. I used regular house masking tape for this line. And I just used a paintbrush, but it, the, the paint got underneath this because sandpaper is not flat glass, you know, so the tape can't stick to it very well. So, whereas this one I used an airbrush, and the air got underneath this tape, so that's why it ran it as well. I suppose if you're really careful, you really press down on the tape so it seals against the grain of the sandpaper, you could be okay. But I happen to have this uh, hobby tape here. <laughs> from Tamiya is meant for masking off 
scale model kits and that worked quite well you know that produced this line with the paintbrush so I'm gonna use this uh, hobby tape here just like this all right so it's a very thin tape and that's I think the reason why it can really get into the nooks and crannies nice I'm gonna make this line a lot longer than the last one so you'll see I'm pressing in and you can see my skin getting sanded on off so I know that that's a pretty good fit against that sandpaper. You can even start to see the grain of the sandpaper coming through, right? So that's one side of my line. And let's see, on this side or this side? The car, I'm gonna go with the top here. I'm gonna go with a thicker line, I suppose. Okay, so just try to get it even, all right? Then start really pressing down, so you really get the uh, tape filling in the nooks and crannies of the sandpaper. Because if you don't, it's gonna, the paint's gonna run. Sorry, the paint's gonna run like these two guys here. All right. So again, you can see my skin is actually getting torn off because it's such a good seal. Okay. So paint-wise, you know, water-based paints, Vallejo. That's what I used in my airbrush. It's okay. It's good. The great thing about water-based is you can thin it with water. But hobby paints like Mr. Keller, Mr. Hobby, and Tamiya, you have to use their paint thinner. You know, and that's another chemical. It's, it's an annoying process. But I'm not even going to bother doing that. Because uh, I know some paint lines in the real world are quite thick, so I'm just going to use this without even thinning it. Look how thick that paint is, right? Let me uh, focus here. And because I'm using this better tape, should work. I mean, it just worked on the other one. Okay. So there. You know, you don't have to be perfect because you know, most paint lines are weathered anyways. Right? So, in fact, after this, you, you might want to even hit it with like a metal brush and take some away. So you can show more of the, the tarmac showing through. But anyways... Now you want to let this dry a little bit, otherwise, I didn't let this one dry and I just tore it off, but I don't know, I think it was the, the tape itself, but uh, let's see here. You know what, we're going to just experiment. You know it can be done, if you let it dry like I did here, it'll turn, turn out close to perfect. But I'm not going to have you guys watch me watch, have you guys watch paint dry, so I'm going to just peel this off and hope for the best. You know what? It's okay. So the issue was the tape itself. This hobby tape is worth the money. You know, that's wet paint, but that, that's a pretty good line. Okay. So, you, you're pretty much done if you want just a tar and a, a line. And you could uh, brush it off with a, a wire brush. But uh, I'm going to recommend this stuff here. This is hobby grass. And that's the hobby grass applicator. So hobby grass, you know, it's for model railroading. You just look at model railroading grass. And it comes in all different uh, sizes and textures. Some have wood chips in them. But this is just uh, like a mix of a green and a yellowish grass. And uh, that's what I have, so that's what I'm going to go with. You could hit this with spray glue, but spray glue will just get everywhere. So I'm just going to use cheap old white school glue. Actually, it's not even white, it's clear. And you don't have to be particularly clean with this because grass doesn't grow in straight lines. Right? I'm going to even leave some spots without glue because that's how this grass apparently grew in the world. Alright, so what's, this, what's going on with this applicator is it's mostly air. And I only put a little bit of that grass in there. And what happens is it creates a static, static charge on the grass as it shoots out of this plastic nozzle. So that static charge is going to actually make the grass stand up. So hopefully, yeah, that seems to be focused. You can see the grass, as I hit it, is slamming into that glue. And you can now hopefully see the dimensionality of it. All right, it's at literally standing up above the uh, sandpaper. So. I mean, maybe you could just put it into a water bottle 
but this is a really soft plastic which allows you to really squeeze it but if you have other bottles that squeeze like this like an old shampoo bottle you might might be able to pull it off without having to buy this thing all right so i don't know i just bought it because i make model kits or dioramas and stuff all right so that looks a little bit better now for me i'm not really a fan of the shininess of the sandpaper so this one actually went back and i added more paint some marker to it to really give it stained look staining and then i hit it with uh, some clear clear coat in particular flat clear coat or it might be called matte clear coat or matte finish which means it's not shiny you know if you just get regular clear coat it's going to be glossy and that's what you're trying to avoid so uh i'm just gonna hit this lightly and then again, I would let this dry. And then I'd probably hit it like three or four more times. Just because I, I don't, I want to have less of the grittiness actually uh, scraping the bottom of my vehicles. Now, if you look carefully, some of that grass is kind of uh, sprayed over here. So you might want to consider going back with a metal wire brush, which I have here, and just scraping that stuff off. Ideally, you'd scrape it off before you hit it with the clear coat, right? Because the clear coat is trying to seal it in. All right, so now that that's finished, you know, pretending that I hit it with a bunch of more clear coat and pretending that it, it actually dried properly. There, now you can put it back on your little solar rotator thingy, my Bob. And you still have access to the, the solar panels so the thing will spin. All right, so hope you learned something. I learned a lot. I learned that you need to invest in a high quality tape or at minimum, take that masking tape and really press down into it. And then if you hit the, the paint really lightly, you might survive with this, but this stuff obviously works better. All right, take care guys.